Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to use Excel to help you find the midpoint, the relative frequency, and the cumulative frequency when you are building an expanded frequency distribution. I do have a previous video that shows you how I used Excel to help me find the frequency and the class limits. So in this one, I want to talk to you about the midpoint, the relative frequency, and the cumulative frequency. So if you're using Excel, finding the midpoint using the midpoint formula is not that complicated. You can actually drag down the formula. If you are doing it by hand and you're not able to use Excel on a test or something, then you can just use the class width to help you find the midpoint. Um, but for this, basically what we are going to do, the midpoint is always going to be the lower class limit plus the upper class limit divided by two. So I had already set up that my lower limit was zero, my upper limit, and then I'm going to divide that by two. And what I can do is I can then just pull this icon down and it will copy the formula down. So now it did the lower class limit for C3 and D3, um, the limits for C4 and D4. So it automatically populates this for you. Um, this is Excel 2016. So if you don't have Excel 2016, yours might not do that. And you might have to type it as is without being able to drag it down. Okay. Um, but it does save you some time uh, by using the formulas built in to Excel and dragging them down. The relative frequency is your actual frequency divided by the sum of your frequency. So for this one, I could in a calculator do 5 divided by 20, 2 divided by 20, 4 divided by 20, etc. Or I can use Excel to help me quickly find the relative frequency by typing in equals. I'm going to select the frequency column, so the 5, and then I'm going to divide it by the total amount, so the 20. I'm going to type in 20 rather than selecting this cell, only because of the fact when I drag it down, if I selected this cell, I would have to remember to put dollar signs in front of it so it doesn't change. So I'm just going to manually type in the 20. Okay, and then what I can do is I can take and drag that formula down and it will adjust the formulas for me. If you want it in two decimal places or three decimal places so they're all the same, you can adjust the number of decimals by using this button. You can go down one or up one, um, but that way they all have the same amount. Okay, so this value here was found by taking two divided by 20, four divided by 20, etc. The key to this column is the sum of the relative frequencies does need to add up to one because 100% of your data points do need to be represented. So the sum of this column is always one or 100%. So that's something you can check to make sure you're not missing anything. Um, if it wasn't one, then it's possible that your sum didn't match your number of data points. Okay. Um, so again, relative frequency is the frequency divided by the sum of the frequency. So this 20 was just the number of data points that I had, which was the sum of all of my frequencies. All right, the cumulative frequency is the total frequency by the end of that class. So for this one, by the end of the first class, I have a total frequency of five. So my cumulative frequency is just going to be five. So if I wanted to, I could do equals. And, and for this one, I really, it doesn't matter. I can either do equals and select this value here, or I could have just typed in the number five. Either way is fine. What matters is on the next one, with a cumulative frequency, you're going to add the next, the next frequency to it. So we're looking by the end of the second class. So for this data right here, by the end of this second class, how many values do I have that fall from 0 to 15? So to get that, I could do 5 plus 2, or I could come over here and count how many I have from 0 to 15. Either way, you're going to get seven. So using Excel, what you can do is you can hit equals, select the previous cell, and then add the frequency of the next class, so of two. And by doing that, when I drag it down, it will automatically populate the rest of the rows for me. And so I can get the cumulative frequency very easily. We can see that five plus two gave me seven. By the end of the third class, I'm adding four more to it. So seven plus four is 11. 
Um, by the end of the fourth class, I'm adding three more to it. And then by the end of the last class, it should match your total frequency or the number of data points that you have. Because by the end of your last class, 100% of your data, data points should be represented in this graphic. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.